Let's make five different poster compositions using a single photo. So our photo for the day is gonna be this Marquez Brownlee shot I got at Championship Weekend this past year. And for our first composition, let's go ahead and make a new layer and hit T for our type tool. I'm just gonna type out 82, Marquez's number. And then for the fonts, let's do this Dharma Gothic Bold. And this is a super tall, skinny and bold font. Let's make sure the spacing is set to its standard. And I'm just gonna make sure this 82 is centered in the middle of the design. So I'm gonna hit Command A and justify with the move tools centering icons at the top. Now let's take our photo and move it above the 82 layer. And then holding Option, we can click on this space between layers. You can also right click on the layer and go down to create clipping mask. This is gonna clip our photo to the layer below it. So we're clipping this photo and now it's only going to the 82. Now if you hit Command T, you can transform your photo down and let's just size this so we have Marquez centered right between the eight and the two. And now what we'll do is we'll make it so he's kind of popping out of the number as well. So to do that, let's hit Command J to duplicate this layer and then hitting W for our quick selection tool Let's go to select subject and Photoshop will do a pretty good job cutting out the subject roughly and we can hit our mask icon in the bottom right. And you can fine tune the selection better than I do in this video, but basically this mask, you can go in with a black brush and kind of take away or erase parts that it included. And you could switch to a white brush, switch your foreground color, X is the shortcut to brush back in parts or take them away. Now we could honestly leave things here, like this is a pretty clean poster layout. I like the amount of white space, but if we did wanna fill some of it, we could create some text either on the sides or on top and bottom. So let's do some side text. I'm just gonna hide this 82 for now so we can type out some text down at the bottom. Let's type out Marquez Brownlee, and then we'll hit six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Number 82. One, two, three, four, five, six, New York Empire. And let's change this font to Termina Regular, or maybe Demi. And we can drop this size down to like 12. So we're gonna make this small and then spaced out font. We can bring back our 82, hit Command T, let's rotate this. And then I'm just gonna drag it up. So again, it's centered in the design. And let's make sure it's kind of even spacing from the edges. So I'm just gonna pull up my grids. You can see it's a four box margin from the left. Hit Command J and then we'll duplicate that layer, bring it around and then same thing, keep this one four boxes from the right. And to finish off this first composition, let's just add a layer of grain over everything. So I'm gonna make a new layer Hit Command A to select the whole canvas, and then going to W, quick selection tool, right clicking, going to fill, 50% gray. And now we can convert this for smart filters and add noise to it. 7% should be good. This is a 1080 by 1350 canvas, kind of my standard vertical dimensions. And then we'll set this blend mode to hard light and the opacity down to 50%. So you just kind of get this subtle noise in the background and going over everything. I edited this photo, by the way, before this tutorial. So you'll see like some of the blacks are faded, the green pops out a little bit more. You can watch my other video on photo filters and how you can make different adjustments to edit your photos. But figured I'd save some time and just focus on the compositions in this tutorial. So let's package this one up and move on to our second composition. Let's name this folder comp one. Now we'll make a new folder for comp two. This one, let's start off with just a fill layer of white. And then I'm just gonna drag up one of our photos. So holding option, you can click and drag a layer to duplicate it. So for this one, we're gonna make this kind of cool camera roll type effect. I'm gonna make a new layer, hit my rectangle tool, use the shortcut, and then just drag out kind of a smallish rectangle in the middle of the design. Again, I'm gonna center, justify it vertically and horizontally. Now dragging the photo on top of the rectangle, similar to how we did the last design, let's clip this image to a rectangle, holding option, clicking in the space between layers. I'm just gonna size it so he fits fully in the frame, but still leaving like a little bit of headroom 
and foot room at the top and bottom. Now I want this cropped photo to be its own layer. So what you can do is hold shift and select both of these layers, right click, and go to convert to smart object. Same thing as going up to convert for smart filters. Now let's hit command J to duplicate this layer and we're just gonna drag it above and below. And I wanna make sure it's evenly spaced. So let's line it up exactly with the bottom and then hold shift and just hit the down arrow key once. That's gonna move it, I think like 10 pixels. And then we'll duplicate that layer and do the same thing with the top as well. So again, lining it up shift arrow key up once. And now I wanna put some blur effects on all of these photos. So let's start with the top one. Let's just give it some vertical motion blur. If you go up to filter, blur, motion blur, 90 degrees, 10 pixels is good for this. And you'll see it just kind of gives it the illusion that this maybe like just swiped down. And then holding option, I'm clicking and dragging my smart filters onto the next photo, which is this bottom one. Same effect, same motion blur see the settings copied over. And then for the center photo, let's add a radial blur, going up to filter, blur, radial blur. And five with the zoom method should be good. You'll see it kind of gives it this whole zoom quality, keeps our focus on the middle, but it also blurs out his face. So I wanna get rid of that. If you go into this mask, that should automatically create itself when you add any smart filter. We're just gonna take a black brush and brush out his face. So now that part is not being affected by the smart filter. You can see the, the black is going on this white mask, meaning we're hiding the effects of it. So I'm just brushing a little bit on his jersey and his face so we keep those parts in focus. And then similarly to the first composition, for this one we're gonna add some side text to fill some of this white space. So let's just steal, we can steal the grain layer as well but let's copy all three of these layers over from the first composition and just focusing on one of the text layers first. I'm just going to expand this out a little bit bigger and a little bit more spaced out. And for these margins, we do a two box margin from the top and from the side, expand it out a little bit more. And then again, Command J to duplicate and then Command T to transform and rotate it. And then we'll do the same margin on the right as well. So that's our second composition. Let's move on to comp three. Again, new folder, comp three, start with the same white fill on a new layer, of course. And now for this one, I wanna draw out a rectangle first. This will be the crop that we'll use. And this one's gonna take up most of our frame. I'm gonna keep the margins about one box from either side. Now let's get our photo in this crop. So again, we can click and drag from this first composition, holding option, and then we'll clip this, same thing, holding option, clicking in the space between layers, clip it to this rectangle so it fills this frame. And now we have our cropped image to start this composition. And now we're gonna make some like big text on the bottom and some smaller text below it. I think the main key for a composition like this is just to have some kind of interesting text effect or type treatment. So for this one, I'm gonna type out Brownlee, just his last name. I'll mess with the spacing. Let's keep it, let's keep it super spaced together, even going into the negatives. So this is just kind of an interesting effect. You can make all the letters touching each other, no space between them. Just kind of gives it this interesting feel where it's more like a shape or a block as opposed to text but can clearly make out the letters still. And we can take this a step further with this sort of cascading stroke effect. And to do that, I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Let's group this new text layer into its own folder. And then again, with our new text layer selected, I'm gonna go to effects and add a stroke. Two pixels should be good. We'll hit okay and then we'll drop this fill down to zero. So now if you hit V for the move tool, hold shift and go down arrow. We can turn back on our initial layer. But we're basically taking the stroked Brownlee and then moving it downward. And now we'll mask out just the bottom. So with this group, the group that contains the stroked text, we'll hit M for our rectangular marquee tool and just draw out a box to mask this bottom portion. Hit our mask icon and then we'll duplicate this layer to make another one of these strokes. And then again, holding shift, two clicks on the down arrow, and now we have this kind of cascading stroke effect. I don't know if that's what it's called, but we're calling it that in this video. Now for the smaller text, we'll add at the bottom, new layer, T for the type tool. We'll just type out Marquez Brownlee, 
we'll change the spacing back to zero and then we can do a demi for the weight and this Marquez Brownlee will left justify and just move it to again that same one box margin duplicate this text layer and let's move it to the middle center justify the text number 82 and then again center this duplicate now we'll right justify the last New York Empire text and we could space these differently if we wanted to feel free to play around with your text layouts always we can mess with the spacing overall so I can just take this Brownlee text move it down so it's closer and then we can expand down this rectangle crop so everything is nice and evenly spaced let's steal that layer of grain back from the first composition as well and that's our third composition. Now for our fourth composition, let's do a similar layout, but let's move this chunk of text to the top of the design and we'll do a different effect on our main image. So let's start just by duplicating this comp three folder since it'll be mostly similar. We'll call this one comp four and I'm gonna take all our text and group that together too. We'll call it text and turn other things off. We'll move our text to the top if it wants to display. Sometimes Photoshop does this where it like doesn't want to show how I'm moving things. It needs like a little refresh. So for this one, I'm going to delete this rectangle. So we just have this photo and we'll drag it all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. And now I'm going to do this kind of gradient fade. So let's make a new layer. Let's go to our paint bucket tool. If you right click, you can get the gradient tool. And then with this white to transparent gradient, I'm just going to click up at the top of our photo and then click and drag downward. So something around there. Now obviously this fades out our main subject as well. So what we wanna do is cut out the main subject and put it on top of this gradient. So to do that, same effect as we saw before with the number crop. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, move it on top of the gradient and then we'll do our select subject when you have the quick selection tool. Hit our mask icon and again, feel free to fine tune your selection better than I do in this video, but this is the, the main idea. And we could probably size this whole thing up a little bit more. So let's take the cutout, gradient, and photo, command T, and just expand it upward a little bit. So the spacing looks more even. So there's our fourth composition. Let's move on to composition five. Last one for today. Let's make a new layer, fill it with white. And for this one, I'm just gonna take our photo again copy it up from composition four. And let's expand this one up to take up the full screen. Still keeping some margins in mind just with the top of his head and the bottom of his feet. And now for this one, let's just mask out kind of the center column of Marquez. So let's make another rectangle layer like we did before when we were kind of creating this crop. I'm just gonna drag this all the way down so it takes up the full height of the canvas. And let's drag it out so it includes the disc. And you can see this is kind of what we're cutting out. So now if I hold command and click on this rectangle layer, that's gonna make a selection for this rectangle. We've already centered it. So now when we click on this photo layer and click on our mask icon, it's just masking out that selection. So now what we'll do with this masked photo is duplicate it. Let's take the bottom one and move it to the left and we'll just line it up with the edge of our central crop and then we'll duplicate it. the same thing move it to the other side this time and this is kind of a cool repeating photo effect you can create so we're also going to drop a hue and saturation layer on top of just the the right and left photo crops and we'll desaturate them completely so now we have these black and white images on the sides, full color in the middle. And then on top of everything, let's add some text. We'll go, we'll go big, bold text in the middle of the design. And we can honestly steal that same Brownlee treatment that we did earlier. So maybe we don't have the stroke this time. But let's just take some white Brownlee text. Maybe this one, we bring in the margins a little bit to that two box and just making sure this is centered in the design. Maybe we wanna lift it up a little bit. And now we can duplicate this layer, shrink it down, and we'll type out his first name as well. Marquez Brownlee. Let's left justify all this. So we'll line it up 
on the left side. And this is pretty legible as is, but if we need some more separation from the text in the background, we can group this text into a single folder, put a drop shadow on it just by going down to your effects, drop shadow, and something subtle and soft. Should do a good job separating it from the background if the colors are clashing at all. And now if we want to get his team name in there too, we can kind of use this space that Brownlee naturally creates in the name. Let's make a new layer and with black text this time, we'll go New York Empire. And we can still use this kind of off black color for this just to match the image a little bit better. We can space this one back to normal. We'll go to Demi. Honestly, maybe we space this out more. Fill out this uh, part of the end of the last name. That creates a nice little holder. And then again, what would a poster composition be without some grain? Let's take that same grain layer from the first composition bring it to the top of everything. And now we have our five compositions. Started with this, this number mask, moved on to this kind of camera roll effect. Then of course, bigger photo crops with some cool text. Same thing with this gradient fade. And then lastly, this black and white repeating photo look. Hopefully this video was helpful in sparking some poster design inspiration. Again, all this was done with a single photo. You do not need a ton of assets to create compelling designs. As always, these posters are gonna look a lot better if you choose good photography to start with. The better the photo is, the better the final result is gonna be.